Hey everyone and welcome back to our channel where we post daily videos on cutting edge technologies. Imagine a platform where AI meets intuition, where the insights are unlocked with unparalleled speed and accuracy. Yes, that's the power of Vertex AI. Vertex AI is a unified platform provided by Google Cloud that simplifies the process of building, training, and deploying machine learning models at scale. It offers a suite of tools and services designed to streamline the entire machine learning lifecycle. It also provides certain built-in models. So in this video, we are going to be using the Gemini Pro Vision, which is supported by the Vertex AI in order to create a project. In this project, the user will be asked to enter an image and a prompt and then this application is going to generate the response for the prompt which the user has entered on the basis of the image provided. Let's start the action. So the first thing that you need to do is to download the required packages that will be needed in this project. So I'm going to open a new terminal window inside which firstly I'm going to install the Vertex AI SDK using the command pip install Google Cloud AI platform. Run it. And it will start downloading all the necessary packages that you will be needing in order to use Vertex AI. And once this is downloaded, the next thing is to import the Streamlit. This is because the application frontend is going to be created using the Streamlit. So I'm going to say pip install Streamlit, hit enter and it will start downloading. Alright, so both our required packages have been successfully downloaded. Now we are going to move towards our next step, which is to set up the credentials for our Google account. And for that, you have to download and install the Google CLI. And once it is successfully downloaded and installed, you have to open the Google Cloud SDK shell. This is how it looks like. And here, in order to set up the credentials for the Google account, I'm going to run the command gcloud auth application default login. Hit enter and a new sign-in window will be opened inside your browser. And once you have logged into your GCP account using the credentials, the credentials will then be saved locally and they will be used by the ADC in order to perform the validation for the credentials. So once you have set up the file for having the credentials for your Google account, now you are all set to use the Vertex AI locally on your system. As I've already defined that this application is going to be a Streamlit application. So I'm going to go ahead and import all the necessary libraries right here. So firstly, I'm importing the Streamlit as ST. Then from the Vertex AI.preview.generative models, which contains all the models supported by Vertex AI, I'm going to be using the generative model and the image. And this generative model will actually contain all the models supported by Vertex AI. Then I am also importing the Vertex AI SDK, the temp file, and the OS for interacting with the operating system. Once you are done with adding the required libraries, now the next most important thing is to initialize the Vertex AI SDK by providing it information about your GCP project on which you want to run Vertex AI along with its region. So let's go ahead and do it. So firstly, I'm going to set the project ID in a variable called project ID. This is going to be the project ID for your GCP account on which you want to run the Vertex AI. Then you have to set the region in which your project is created. And then using these two parameters, I'm going to initialize the Vertex AI SDK using Vertex AI.init inside which we are going to pass the project ID and the location, which is actually the region where the project is present. Now I'm going to create the actual function on which all of the processing will be done in order to get the response from the Gemini Pro Vision model supported by the Vertex AI. So I'm going to define the function. The name of the function is going to be generate response and it will take a prompt and an image file path as an input. The prompt is going to be the question which the user wants to ask from the image and the image file variable will actually contain the path of the image which the user will upload using the file uploader. Then inside this function, this is all the code that we need in order to generate the response. Here is a brief summary of the function that the function is used to generate response based on the prompt and an image. These are the parameters and it returns the generated response. Now let's quickly go through this function. So firstly, inside this function, I am using the image.load from file function in order to load the file from the provided path. As I've already mentioned that this image file actually contains the path of the image which the user have entered. So in order to load the file from the path, I'm going to be using the load from file function and the image which the user have uploaded will be saved inside this variable called image. 
After that, I'm going to initialize the generative model with a specific model from the list of models supported by Vertex AI. So I'm going to create a variable called generative multimodal model and inside it, I'm going to initialize the generative model and the model which I'm going to be using is the Gemini 1.0 Pro VM. Then after initializing the generative model, now I'm going to be using its generate content function to provide it the prompt and the image in order to generate the response from it. So this generate content function actually takes a prompt or the question which should be run on the image along with the image file itself. And in response, it is going to return us the answer to our question, which will be stored inside this variable called response. And you must be thinking that why I have written all of these things instead of simply returning the response. This is because the response contains a few other things apart from the only response. So inside the response, we had a list called candidates and on its index zero, we had content and the content has an attribute called text. And this text actually contains the text for our response. So instead of printing only the response and looking for our required data, I'm simply printing the exact value that we need. And this is the entire code in order to get the response from the model provided by the Vertex AI. Now the only thing that is left is to create the front end using the streamlet. And I'm going to be creating the front end of the application inside the main function. And here is the code for it. Let's quickly go through this code. So inside the main function, I am adding a few UI components. Firstly, I am setting the title and an image to be displayed on the screen as the first thing. So the title is going to be Vertex CI with the Gemini provision. And this image is actually the logo of the company. Then since we want to have an image and a prompt or a question uploaded or entered by the user. So firstly, I'm going to be using the streamlit.file uploader that will take a file as input from the user and it will be saved inside the variable called image. But this image variable does not contain the path where the actual image was present. So I'm going to use the temp file right here and I'm going to create a temporary directory using temp file dot make temp directory and then I'm gonna provide a temporary path which will be fetched from the temporary directory that we have created and that path will be saved inside the variable called path after that we are simply writing the uploaded file to the specified path now this path actually contains the file which the user have uploaded and this will be temporarily saved so once the application will run only then this image will be saved on that location and once the application stops running, then it will be overwritten. So you don't need to worry about the memory space. All right, so now we have the path for the file inside the variable called path. The next thing is to have the question or the prompt entered by the user. And for that, I'm gonna firstly create a header saying the question and in order for the user to enter the text, I'm gonna be creating a text area and the label of it is going to be enter your question and whatever user will enter will be stored inside the variable called question then i'm creating a button called submit and its state will be stored inside the submit button now we only have to call the generate response function upon the button click and display the response so let's quickly do it so firstly i'm going to check that if the question and the submit button have been pressed and entered now inside this if condition I'm going to simply call the generate response, which takes two parameters, the prompt and the image path. So I'm going to pass the prompt, which is placed inside the variable called question and the path, which we have just fetched using the temp file. And once this function will be called, it will return us the response for our prompt, which will be saved inside the variable called response. And I'm going to create another header for the answer. And then I'm going to use the streamlit.write function in order to display the response on the screen to the user. And this is the entire code for our Streamlit application using Vertex AI's Gemini ProVision model that takes an image as input from the user and a question which the user wants to ask and generates a response according to the image. Now the only thing that is left is to test our application. So let's quickly open the terminal and run the command Streamlit run and provide your file name which in my case is vertex.py. Hit enter and a new browser window will be opened and your user interface for the application will be right in front of you. So this is the user interface of the application. Here is the image, which is actually the company logo. Here is the file uploader. This is the text area in which user will enter the question and this is the submit button. 
Now let's go ahead and test out our application. So I'm going to click on the browse files button right here. And from here, I'm going to select the file. So once the file is uploaded, now I'm going to enter the question which I want to ask from the image. So I'm going to say explain what is happening in the image and what objects are there. Click the submit button and you will see that in a matter of few seconds, it will generate the response for you. So it says that the image shows a sunset over the ocean. The sky is a gradient of orange, yellow and pink with the sun setting in the middle. The water is a deep blue with waves crashing on the shore. And there are also two large ships in the distance. Let me quickly show the image which I have uploaded. So this is the image which I uploaded and it has provided me the exact description of what is happening inside this image. And if I zoom in a bit, you can see that there are two ships which aren't really much clear to the human eyes but this model was able to detect those ships as well because you can see that it has provided us that there are also two large ships in the distance so this means that it is able to point out all the objects and the exact scenario which is happening in the image now let's test it with another scenario this time i'm gonna see if it is able to spot all the objects which are present inside an image so i'm gonna go ahead and upload a new file for this use case the image which I have uploaded is actually this one. It is a basket having a wide variety of fruits. And you can see that all of the fruits are not clearly visible. Some are also hidden. And for some fruits, only some part of it is being displayed in the image. So let's see if Vertex AI using the model is able to identify all of these fruits and all the objects in the image or not. So for that, I'm going to provide it the prompt that how many fruits are present in the image also provide the names of them all hit the submit button and wait for it to generate the response all right so the response is generated you can see that there are 14 fruits in the image and it is also provided us all the 14 fruits which are present inside the image so let's quickly view the image again and here it says that we have banana dragon fruit grapes kiwi orange so we have banana here is the dragon fruit here is the grapes we have the strawberry and all the fruits right here which it has provided us in the list so this means that this model is also able to count and identify all the objects which are present in the particular image now i'm going to see another use case which is to check if this model is able to perform some analysis on the basis of the image and perform different calculations so i'm going to use the same image but this time i'm going to prompt it that consider the provided image, how much should I pay for this fruit basket given the following price list per item. And then I have provided the price list for all the fruits per, per item. So you can see that here is the list of all the fruits which are present inside the basket along with the price of the basket. And I am asking it that how much should I pay for this fruit basket given the following price list per item. Let's quickly go ahead and submit our prompt to see the response. And you can see that in just a matter of one or two seconds, it has provided me the response. So it says that the basket contains four bananas, one dragon fruit, two bunches of grapes, two bunches of purple grapes, two kiwis, four strawberries, three oranges and so on. And on the basis of the provided price list per item, it has calculated the total cost by multiplying the price with the quantity of each fruit. So the total brings us to $29.68 and it says that you should pay $29.68 for this fruit basket. So this means that this application is also able to perform different type of analysis and calculations on the basis of the provided image which is really cool. Another use case for this application can be to extract out information from an image. So for example that you have a class diagram, a sequence diagram or an ERD and you want to get all the attributes and the relationships between the classes. So you can use this application right here, upload your image and provide it the prompt to extract the information. So let's go ahead and upload the image. So I've saved the image in a file called ERD. Let me upload it. And now I'm going to firstly remove all of this and then I'm going to say document the entities and relationship in this ER diagram and structure your response in the JSON format for entity, relationships, and their fields. So let's see if it is able to extract this information from the diagram or not. This is the image which I have uploaded. So it is an ER diagram having different entities, their attributes, and the relationships between the attributes. Now let's head back to our browser to see the response. Okay, so it is still running. I'm going to come back once the response is generated. 
all right so here is the response and you can see that it has provided me the response in the json format as i described right here in my question and inside the json format it has specifically defined the entities the fields the attributes and the relationships for all the fields so in this way you can provide it any diagram that you want and it will provide you information that is present inside this image and then finally i'm going to test this application to see if it is able to read out the graphs in the provided image and understand it so i'm going to upload an image which is actually a graph and this is the graph which is uploaded it is a mobile vendor market share and these are all the different companies and the information about their shares so after uploading the graph in the application i'm going to provide it the prompt to provide detailed description of this graph click on the submit button and you will see that it will provide you the response so it says that the graph shows market share of the five mobile phone vendors from 2017 to 20 which is correct then it has also provided us some information by understanding the graph because if you look at the graph you will see that this is just an image and only a person having information about reading the graph is able to interpret it but this model has interpreted the graph well and has provided us information about looking at the graph so this means that it is also able to view data visualization understand it and interpret it so in this way you can use this application to fetch valuable information data and objects from different images by simply providing a prompt that's all for this video i hope that you enjoyed this project as much as i did thanks for watching